Hi, um, in this video I am going to talk about uh, what actually is system designing, why it is needed and how the systems have evolved over the time. So right from the beginning of the internet, um, when the web started, how the web services were being built at that time and how it is different, uh, how they are built today and why the difference is there, right? So internet is pretty old now and um, it started very long back, uh, at that time also we used to build systems but since the load or the amount of requests that your server used to get at that point of time were very less. So what we used to do is let's say um, uh, back in the time if you want to start a new um, new Amazon let's say. So what you will do, you will just um, create one box and or you will buy one box, you will write some HTML, some Java or some web server and you will put that both the things onto the on the box and you will connect it to the internet and the request will come over here you may store your uh, uh, data on the box itself or you, you will be using a separate box and uh, using it for DB you will hardly get like since it's th th those were the early days you will not get too much load so you will hardly get 1 RPS or 10 RPS amount of load and it was fairly good you will get the request here you will store it in the DB and again when the request comes in you will fetch it from the DB and you will store it in the or you will return the response to the user now as the internet becomes popular and um, it, it, it becomes um, it goes to the hands of more and more people the load on your server will increase that's the common thing right so when it was 10 RPS or maybe 1 RPS or 10 RPS let's say it was easily able to handle your load now the load becomes let's say 1000 RPS so obviously the system which was which you were using um, earlier uh, it was able to handle 10 RPS load but since the load has increased and uh, amount of data will also get increased right so uh, earlier if it was um, only 1 GB you were needing so now you might need 1 TB amount of data 1 TB is actually very large um, but earlier if you were using let's say 500 MBs or some amount of some way less amount of data and you now you may need 10 GB amount of data. So how you solve this problem? Um, again it looks like very straightforward. Uh, instead of using a smaller RAM, increase the RAM. In instead of uh, using smaller size box for DP, again use a box with a larger size. So this is called vertical scaling. You will <laughs> scale your system vertically from a system with low configuration, with less amount of RAM, with less amount of a disk with less amount of uh, network bandwidth, you will use a system with um, better performance, like maybe better CPU, better RAM, so that you can now handle uh, 1000 RPA. So this is called, uh, let's say, phase 1, and this was phase 2. Your load increased from 10 RPA to 1000 RPA. When the load increased from 10 RPA to 1000 RPA, there was Another problem which came, which was called availability. Scalability was still not a problem because 1000 RPS was uh, working fine and um, a single box was able to handle it. Over here, we were not caring about scalability, we were not caring about availability. Why? Because it was the, those were the early days, and if the system is not available, we did not have any, had any uh, problem. We were good with it because we can offline, we can take the system offline, fix it and then put it online again and inform the users that it is now online. But when the uh, system grew to 1000 RPS, the expectations of people uh, also increased and it, it happened like uh, you need availability now. Scalability you do not need because again the system uh, do not need scalability inherently, the amount of load is still less. But you want the system to be available all the time. So what you will do? You started using um, redundancy. So you started replicating your system. So for example, if there was a single box and it was, so let's say um, there was a single box of uh, let's say application server and there is a DB. So what you will do is you will use master slave over here. And this is a slave. Again, for the DB also, you will use master slave. And uh, your master will connect with, with the DB, I mean, whatever db layer you have and <laughs> this will connect to here or the here and your uh, master is a primary server so whenever uh, user requests the request will go to master 
and master will use the DB again when the request comes for DB, it will go to the master and your transaction or processing or whatever operation you are using will go through and um, now what will happen is to make the system available if the master goes down, uh, your, server, your slave will take over and it will be as a master. Meanwhile, you can take um, take out new node and put it again back in the systems to so that that can work as slave after that. But uh, the system becomes more available when one node goes down, there's another node which can take over and start working um, for you. Uh, similarly for DB, if uh, DB goes down, I mean primary goes down, so secondary will take over uh, as a primary and uh, whenever the primary gets updated, those uh, data is also replicated to the secondary so that whenever secondary takes over, uh, the data is already there. Uh, the data is not lost when the primary goes down, you don't have to copy the data from here to here first using this copy or something. Um, the data is already getting copied asynchronously to the slave. So uh, at 1000 RPS you solved your problem uh, for availability using master slave architecture. Now again the system grew and uh, today when you are building a system it's not 1000 RPS anymore. It's actually very, um, very high amount of data or very high amount of transactions that you are doing these days. There are some um, companies which are actually clocking uh, 1 million RPS. You can assume the scale uh, at which they are operating. This is anyways not possible using a single box, right? So now what you have to do is you have to use multiple boxes. So when you have 1 million RPS, this is phase 3. At this scale, uh, you need scalability because um, you had a single box which was able to handle 1k RPS or maybe let's say yeah 1k, 1K RPS and but you want your system to handle 1 million RPS so what you need is you need scalability here availability you anyways need because that is coming from previous phase to the existing phase so you both need availability as well as scalability how will you scale your system a scaling system from 1000 to 1 million uh, RPS um, you will have to use more system, right? Because a single system, um, maybe if you are using 1 GB RAM, you can use it 10, 12, um, 16 GB RAM. You can increase your RAM even further, but at some point of time, you will have to stop and you will not be scale your system. You will not be able to scale your system vertically. So what horizontal scaling means that you have, you are using multiple boxes to um, handle your input or handle your request. So instead of putting just one box, let's say box one, you will use multiple boxes B2, 1K here, or maybe let's say 100, I mean whatever 1K here, B3 will again handle 1K. So you will use identical boxes or maybe different uh, configuration boxes, but the idea is you will use multiple boxes and each of the box will handle some uh, amount of requests so that overall system will handle the complete request. So if it's 1 million RPS and each of the boxes handling uh, 1000 requests, so 1 million divided 1000, whatever number of boxes comes in, you will have to use uh, those number of boxes. So some of the requests will go to this box, some of the requests will go to this box, and some of the requests will go to this box, and similarly to others. So this way you will be able to handle 1 million RPS very easily. And if your uh, load even increases further tomorrow, like maybe 2 million RPS, you will just increase the number of boxes that you have, and uh, you are going to new boxes will start handling those extra um, requests. And this scenario is of today. Um, coming up with this architecture like where you should use single box still today, where you, you will use multiple boxes still today is sort of a trade-off. Uh, even, even, even today uh, in, in the systems that you build, uh, it might happen that you do not need horizontal scaling in all of them. You are good with just one box, so you will use master slave architecture over there. Um, so if you have very less amount of data, you know the amount of, so for example, just take an example of Book My Show or Ticketmaster, uh, like just a booking website which has very specific or very limited number of options. Why I'm not taking uh, flight booking or hotel booking? Because the number of options increases very high in that segment. In site like movie booking website, the, um, the number of options, so for example, you might have, how many cities you have, let's say 100, uh, in which Book My Show is operating and uh, in, in, in which your booking site is operating and let's say each city maximum has uh, 10 movies at a time, right? So at a time you will have 1000 
um, amount of rows in your DB, right? So that is very less amount of data. And even for a year, if you see, this will still remain very less amount of data and that you will be easily able to use um, phase two systems and you will not you will not use distributed um, partition data you will use massive architecture and you will use single box for handing your request so it depends mostly on your system on your problem on your domain like what type of system do you need do you actually need horizontal partitioning do you actually uh, can you solve your problem using master save architecture because um, partitioning data also require um, it also actually comes in so much of our head. You have to think about how you will partition your data, how will you distribute your request to multiple servers. Um, so overall, it's a trade-off uh, between your different components of the system, and that's where system design comes in. You have to think like what design suits best to your uh, particular component in the system. So yeah, this was the evolution of uh, system designing also. We started with very small systems, then we scaled those systems using vertical scaling to handle a little bit more amount of load. And then we scaled system using combination of vertical scaling and horizontal scaling. Um, even in today today's system, it's a combination of both. That's it. Uh, thank you for watching.